Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, FamilyPetAncestry.com. You're probably already there. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg composed and sang that song with his wife, Sarah, that you just heard. He's going to sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio, and Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, the website. There are many ways to support the show. The Amazon link is one. You can use an Amazon link from JackieCation.com or DorkForest.com to go to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show. There is a straight up donation button, PayPal or Venmo to this uh, email address that is mine, Jackie at JackieCation.com, where you can just donate to the show if you like the show a lot. I think PayPal has figured out a way to do a monthly. If you want to go monthly, please do. Other ways to support the show if you want to is you can buy merch. There's Dork Forest t-shirts and all the shirts are union made here in America. So they run a little big. Union Bayside. So if you want to look up their size chart. And then the other merch is my stand-up merch. On JackieCation.com, you can watch me do stand-up. You can look at my schedule and the stand-up merch, a couple of different t-shirts, a couple of different enamel pins, and all my CDs and my DVD. If you want to live stream my DVD, it's over there at ComedyFilmNerds.com. They have a live streaming capability, or you can get a hard copy of the DVD on my website. Oh, there are premium episodes at Bandcamp. The dorkforest.bandcamp.com has probably 10 episodes that were done live. They cost me a couple of bucks to make, so I charge you a couple of bucks. If you've run out of regular episodes, go over to ba- the dorkforest.bandcamp.com and get some more. Other than that, I say this. Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room, and uh, this hour, I am with uh, Samantha Varela. Is yeah, that right? You did it. Varela, I did it right. Yay. Yay. I have known you for low these decade, probably yeah. easily a decade, because you book stand-up comedy, you produce and promote shows, yes. you, uh, you're, you know, essentially the power behind the throne. That's how I like to think of Sam Fro. <laughs> the rising power. Whatever the lowest person <laughs> in Game of Thrones is that has like a little crown. Oh. I've never seen that show. I'm just saying as a cultural stand. Well, literally my show last night, they were like, oh, people didn't come because of Game of Thrones. So now it's on my mind. <laughs> right. So now you know that that's a thing. Yeah. And I know right. that I'm doing a show on the finale night, which is exciting. <laughs> right. And people love that show. I have tried to watch it. It did not take very surprising because people are like, well, it's fantasy. And I'm like, I don't think it is. I feel like it's more like... Uh, I think it's political drama. I think it's prestige in pe- incest porn. It is also that. It also <laughs> has a great deal of incest, and I'm not... It's hard for me to... There's so much... I think it's political drama, Yeah, which is something I've never enjoyed. No. Uh, because we're living it. Yeah. I can't possibly be part of that. Uh, but... I'd love to hear people talk about what they love about it, mm-hmm. uh, which is a different episode. I don't think I've ever done a Game of Thrones really? episode, actually, That's which surprising. is weird. Yeah. I feel 900 like episodes tweet, later. You get a lot of responses for that one. Yeah. There you go. Send it to me. Let me know who, who I should have on. I'm a producer. I'm always trying to get You're, things going. Right. You're always trying to get things going. Uh, so, which is so funny because this, so what the shows that you produce are in New York and Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, almost exclusively, right? Yeah, I do festivals and stuff like that, but there hasn't been a clamoring yet for my brand in other places. Oh, for your... All right. Well, <laughs> please note that uh, Sam Varela. Yes. Yes. Sam Varela uh, is uh, available. It's Naked Comedy. And, and and so Naked underscore comedy on Twitter. Yes. And Naked Comedy on Instagram. Yes. And your dorkdom... <laughs> I've I've only done a couple of these, and uh, I say let's do it a rabbit hole because I think we all know that I don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I have two podcasts, but I don't listen to them. I listen to books on tape. I listen to some music, and when I say some music, I mean one album over and over again yes, for me years. Too. Me too. Awesome. So we're in the same, just a different talking. Right. Genre. So you had podcasts and then rewatching television, but let's start with <laughs> podcasting. Yeah, I feel like the rewatching television is more of a sign of depression. <laughs> Oh, it might be a sign of depression, but 
what is po- I mean, I think it's all. <laughs> what is work done besides signs of depression? I think, yeah, I think we're all just trying to fight something. <laughs> anyway, what podcasts? So, how long have you been listening to? Have you been listening since two thousand six? Uh, yeah. I mean, I got into. I started doing comedy stuff in two thousand eight, so that's like where comedy started for me, quote unquote. Right. Um, but I started doing a. It, what you would call a podcast now, which was just interviewing people for a show I had on college radio. Mm-hmm. And I did that because I was listening to uh, Best Show and WTF and Never Not Funny and whatever other fourth podcast was around at that time. Right. <laughs> okay. So in, in 2008, you had a podcast? I mean, I had a show at my college radio station. But okay. I did ask Where was to, that college radio station? Uh, KUCI, UCI Irvine. Actually, Naked Comedy is still available on iTunes. So if you want to hear a sleepy college sophomore interviewing <laughs> Andy Dick or the PFR people or John Glaser. <laughs> What's PFR? PFR is the, um, they did that show Wonder Shows in. And now they're kind of like a disbanded art comedy collective of four people. And one of the guys still works with like John Glazer on all his shows. And the other guy, they're just, they're other comedy professionals. But they had a really cool show, Wonder Shows in with uh, Maniacal Puppets. I'm going to have to maybe mix up the order of the airing of this. Because this is going to be another episode where we take a, a quick walk through things I don't know. And in this case, it's going to be my own industry. So, uh, so it, uh, you listen to WTF and, 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 um, never not funny from early on. Yeah. I, I, I always feel like I was still late to the boat because when I got on AST, I was like in straight lurker mode because I was like too intimidated to get in the middle of the friendships that had already built. AST stands for a special thing. And it was a special thing.com, which had a chat room or a board. It was a message board. It was a message board back in the day, like 2006 though, 2007. Yeah. That's right? why I say I was on the late end of the boat because okay. there was already a, a whole community established, but it I was... would post my episodes. Yeah. I was like, the only thing I would ever post was just like my episode flyer. And that's I, how. I, so I think for that first year, Joe Wilson and I tried to post on AST. <laughs> he was better at it than I was. And I was like, nope. You had no HTML uh, and all that stuff. Well, he was, he actually, he's still alive. There's no reason for me to <laughs> talk about him in the past tense. I haven't uh, talked to him in a little while. But I he did, still exists. <laughs> he does exist still on this realm. And, uh, but he was, he was just better at that posting part of it. And that was, of course, why he ended up leaving the Dork Forest. Because... I wasn't doing Jack. And uh, I did not notice that I wasn't doing Jack until he left. And then, uh, and I was always grateful that he did what he did when we were, when he was the co-host, but uh, I was never, I don't think grateful enough. And then when he left, I had to take over the reins and do that. But it was still the Wild West. Like, I'm sure you were still like, what's a podcast, even though you hosted one. Right. Well, we didn't, uh, we didn't know. And it was, uh, but WTF was always pre-recorded, right? As far as I know, yeah. I mean, he did a few live shows at like festivals and stuff, but the the classic but WTF the, the quality, yeah, it was always that classic format. Same with Never Not Funny, always pre recorded. Never like the Dork Force started that as this call in thing, uh, and uh, so that's fascinating that you were listening because that's the first. Because I think my episode of WTF, when I did not know what podcasts were, <laughs> and I didn't know who was going to listen to, certainly I didn't know how big. <laughs> what the fuck was going to yeah. be, which is uh, Mark Barron's podcast, where he has <laughs> since, like, he, it's amazing who he gets on that show. Like, his guests, I I mean, I, I don't know, do you think he enjoys it still? <laughs> do you still listen to it? Uh, I haven't listened in a while. It was a little weird. I, uh, for the listener's background, I did work for WTF for about two and a half years uh, when he was still doing the Marin show. So to put it in a timestamp. Okay. Cause um, he had a TV show. Yeah. This that was, during, I was on. This was during the FX. Second, no, uh, IFC. IFC. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of stopped listening after I stopped working because my favorite part of the show was listening to the intros and like knowing in real life what happened and like how he skewed it was really funny to me. <laughs> oh, like because he would record that those ten minute intros. Yeah, and he would talk about something in his life, and oftentimes I knew about the incident he was talking about, and yeah. so it was interesting to hear his perspective on. Oh, the so matter. that was your favorite part of the podcast yeah. for the long for like those years that you worked there. Yeah, because yeah, you yeah. knew the things that were happening in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's kind of fascinating. Yeah, and then um. So uh, did he, so you witnessed what he was essentially bitching about in those first 10 minutes. And now it's harder to listen to because you don't, you're not every day in his life or every week in his life. Well, 
Yeah, that, and definitely, like, not to shade it, but I preferred when it was, like, comedians and stuff, so I'm not familiar with as many people or, right, like... he does a lot of musicians and actors now, Yeah, right? I mean, that He was... did the President of the United States. Yes, yes. That's insanity. Yeah, no, that was actually, like, the main reason when it did finally come time for me to leave. I was just like, you know, I really want to work specifically in comedy booking, and I think I Barack to... Obama was not your idea. He's, he's, of, uh, he's yeah. just fine. He's, just the president. I mean, he was funny at that uh, correspondence dinner, right? But, I mean, I haven't seen his set. I haven't seen his wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I got to meet Barack Obama, I think I'd lose my shit. Uh, that guy, that's a good guy. And uh, that's interesting. Uh, for a politician, I'm on board with that guy. And so... Um, and to go to an address that is like... Why, that was widely available on the internet. That was another thing at the time because uh, you could like Google his address. It was like public record. Marin's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was in the book, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is he hidden now? Did he move and he hide? He did move. I feel like he did. I, I would just assume that he made it a point to not have it be publicly findable again. Oh, interesting. It's a... Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I was, uh, you know, Henny Youngman and Malcolm X, both in the book until their death. <laughs> Malcolm X, because he said his uh, his enemies never had any problem finding him. It was his friends who couldn't find him. <laughs> so he was like, well, why not be listed? But when you have a podcast, you have way more friends than you think. You have way more friends than you think. Now, do you feel that? Do you feel that because you're a listener of podcasts? Oh, that, yeah. That I you mean, know everybody? Well, yeah. I mean... I was about to say before we started, I was, was listening to some Dork Force to like get psyched for this this appearance, <laughs> and I was listening to the one with Hemda and Keith, and they were talking about how a fan had like come to their house and like because they got in a fight with their mom about listening to the podcast. Yeah, and I was like, I think that's like part of the impetus of what got me into comedy was like I want to be able to come to your house like I have right now oh, but right. the only way to do that is to be to actually be working yeah. right because otherwise it's a weird pop in yeah 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 it is a weird pop in uh, so as much as a... I love Rangers of the Dork Forest please <laughs> no pop ins unless it's a you've lot. earned your uh, mark in the career well and there's no yeah and there's no <laughs> earning it it's uh, literally uh, not even my friends pop in <laughs> so you are scheduled to appear oh, at yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. this 4pm uh, yeah, slot yeah, yeah. and I'm like thank god She's here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you just showed up tomorrow at 4 p.m., yeah. I had one guest, uh, and it was someone I wanted over. Uh, but he was a week early. Oh, no. And I sent him away. Oh, no. Uh, I can't. <laughs> and uh, he, Mark Wade, he's a famous comic book uh, author. And I was like, dude, you're a week early. I'm not prepared. I don't have the, the I can't do it. The constant struggle of the podcast. The constant, uh, well, the, the scheduling is crazy, too. So you are, by the way, the only person I've ever heard say that they love the first 10 minutes of that with the <laughs> TF. Yeah, I think, you know, again, it took the, the sleuthing of getting into the back end of that show to get into it, you know? To get into it. So yeah. prior to that, when you didn't work on the show and you just listened to it, what did you love? What do you love about podcasts? Um, I mean, I for WTF specifically, it was a good like educator on all of these. Because I was basically going to school in Orange County and going to LA every night to like meet comics, interview them. This was back... You know, in 2008, you could ask anybody to do a podcast and they would do it because no one was asking them to do stuff. Right, right. So I was just really getting into that world and like taking advantage of like who are the great people that will let me talk to them and, and stuff like that. Um, so I feel like the podcasting for me a little bit started like research. Like I'm somebody who really likes to learn. So, you know, when you listen to a podcast, especially when it's like a specific interview with somebody, yeah. you're like, you know, you're learning a lot about them, a lot more than they even know that they're like sharing. Oh, entirely. Yeah. And so, yeah, my, my Wikipedia page is populated with information I never know I told people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it's, and it's fine. My life is relatively an open book. Uh, I do <laughs> stand up. To, it has to be, yeah. Uh, so, and it's not the kind of stand up that hides my personal life. Yeah. So, so be it. But what, um, so were they, so you're listening to that one. What was the other one? Never Not Funny, which is, Jimmy Pardo and the AST guy, yeah. uh, which Nap. Matt um, Bel Nap. Belknap, who founded all thing, uh, a special um, thing. Yes. yes. <laughs> Too many acronyms. I know. Uh, a special thing. <laughs> and it's so funny that, because um, Pardo, will, he mostly interviewed comics as well, right? Yes. And so it was all, so it was pretty much, you were listening to comics, talking to comics, before it became saturated. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, to be clear, my, my fandom in the boldest letters is comedy, like live comedy, L.A. comedy. Um, 
So that was what was attracting me. But also with Jimmy Pardo and Never Not Funny, that's also just an entertaining listen. You know what I mean? You could listen to sure. Pardo talk about this guy and it would be funny. Uh, sure. It's up there. <laughs> and uh, no, I love Jimmy Pardo. <laughs> no, it's like hesitation. And, well, yeah, I'm just like, I don't listen to any podcast. Yeah. And I think there are certain podcasts that, so what current uh, podcasts are you listening to? I mean. Did you bring a list? <laughs> I can look in my phone for the 40 podcasts that I You're listening cycle to 40 through. podcasts. Are I mean, they almost all an hour each? I listen to Womp It Up. Um, on what is Ear- that? Womp It Up is a podcast on Earwolf with Jessica St. Clair and Lennon Parham. Who are they? They are UCB performers, but they basically... What are their names? Lennon Parham and Jessica St. Clair. I've never heard of them. They live here in Los Angeles? Yeah. They're, they're, they work for the Upright Citizens Brigade? They're UCB performers like the Jason Manzoukas's. And I don't know who Jason Manzoukas is. <laughs> Who's Jake and Jason Manzoukas? Jason Manzoukas is a co-host of... Uh, does he have a podcast? He does. How Did This Get Made with Paul Shear and June Diane Raphael. Who's Paul Shear? Paul Shear is also a UCB person who also used to be in the group Human Giant with Rob Hubel and canceled a season. Sorry. I do not know who Rob Hubel is. Who's Rob Hubel? <laughs> Rob Hubel is a comedian also from the comedy world who also had a podcast that was really good, actually. Um, Mike Detective. It was like a faux noir detective drama, but just really funny. And it was scripted? It was scripted. All right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah so that's that one that's podcast. one that's one i also listen to all fantasy everything what is that that is a podcast where ian carmel david bory and sean jordan uh ian carmel is a 35 year old white guy who writes for late night television and yes. is very nice yes, yes, yes who are the other two david bory is a comic who is now the voice of comedy central he took the mantle from kyle canane right um and has a special coming out and sean jordan is another comic on the show who has an album coming out on AST. And what's the um, name of that album? Uh, the Buck Stops Here. Hilarious that you know all <laughs> these things. That is fantastic. Now, are all three of these gentlemen, white gentlemen, in their mid-30s? No, David Bory is an African-American gentleman, and Sean... And he Jordan- is in his mid-30s? Uh, I'd say... Probably? Yeah, mid-30s. <laughs> but I think Sean Jordan might be older. I don't mean to call him out, but I think there's a question mark at his age. <laughs> Fair enough. And these are three... Male comics on a show called What's Ian's? What's the name of it? Fantasy. All fantasy, everything, where they do like a fantasy draft, but for silly things like, uh, you know, your favorite appetizer or your favorite song to get down to, or like Ian Carmel has a very uh, wonderful joke about pancakes for the table. Yes, that is my premise of uh, my favorite premise of Ian Carmel currently. It's a famous premise for life. It's a good rule. That's a good rule. Uh, order pancakes for the table, then everybody gets a bite of pancake yeah, yeah, yeah. for breakfast. Now. Um, so they so that one's not about stand up. That one is not about stand up, but it's, it's just stand up comics. Yeah, and on a hilarious premise. So still comedy. What what podcast. is one of the episodes uh what what is one of the things that they have fantasy drafted? Um, well, like I said, they did like appetizers, which was a pretty, pretty legendary show in the canon of that podcast because, uh, Shane Torres, friend of the podcast, enemy of the podcast, um, drafted sampler platters, (laughs) which caused a major controversy over whether a sampler platter counts as an appetizer as it is multiple appetizers. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So that's a good one to jump in on. And oh, good one to jump in on. (laughs) It's a sampler platter is so. And now people send Shane sampler platters at his show. <laughs> That's because hilarious. Their following is so big. So a sam- a sampling platter is yeah. So do you know what the numbers are? These all hugely popular or? Um, I mean, they all vary. I know that. Uh... Uh, it's weird for somebody working in podcasting. I know very few specific numbers of shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I just know that All Fantasy, everything is one of those ones that like your friend started and then all of a sudden they're selling out 400 seat theaters in multiple states. You know what that I mean? That is like, huge. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the That's barometer. real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, that's then, the goal of podcasting for comics all along, right? It was like to nope. push. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's. Not, I mean, but the thing is, is I am not your normal pod. I mean, I just do want to do stand up comedy and yeah. then. And then I like to talk to people about what they love. Yeah. So I don't know. I think, again, as a producer, I was like, but then you should make money off of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, again, <laughs> everybody keeps saying that to me today. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I like money. And money is good. But it's uh, the the weird thing is, is that uh, where I, when I do a live Dork Forest, it genuinely, it's 22 people <laughs> in any given town. Hong Kong. 22 people that's a good that's a good base though for worldwide where it's any city in the world it unless it's a comedy festival that has sold tickets uh and they don't even know what they're coming to see it's always 22 people and i don't know why 
And I don't know how it turns into that. Well, I think it is it like I mean, podcasting as an industry has been very interesting to watch as a fan and as somebody who's been in it basically from the beginning where people were still like, What's a podcast? Why why would I ever put an ad on this? Uh, you know, where you can't get you know, the most basic of subscription boxes to give you an ad uh, to now where it's pretty standard that, you know, after the after the show launches in the first few months, we'll start getting it in the festival circuit. And like, there's really like a, a machine in some of these podcasting networks to like, build a brand out of a show. Interesting. And it's definitely, it feels like now that I got back into working in podcasting, I feel okay about it. But for the moments where I didn't have a job and I wasn't in podcasting, I was very upset that I had missed the boat on the money part of it. <laughs> right. Well, the money part of it, I once was on a panel with Chris Hardwick and Dave Anthony about podcasting. And they were, it was at a radio festival, a festival of, of radio broadcasters and stuff like that. And they kept talking about monetization and they kept talking about the word monetization and they kept talking about different structure. And at the end of the sort of the, the whoever was moderating didn't understand that the people from radio didn't know what podcasting was because <laughs> this is 10 years ago. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of the end of the, um, the panel, somebody said uh, that they could ask questions. The first question that was asked was, <laughs> How do you get it on iTunes? Yeah. Which is, where do you put it? Yeah. Like, you can, re you can pre-record or you can do Blog Talk Radio, which automatically uploads it to their website and iTunes. Yeah. But if you pre-record, you have to upload it to SoundCloud or to Libsyn or to whatever. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, it was just Libsyn. Right. Right. And it was, um, but it's, it's interesting that, that. People still don't know what the hell it is, and they don't know where to get it, and it's and it's fine. Um, and networks are interesting. Do you tend to listen by network? No, I definitely span the horizon. It's mostly I mostly listen to people that I know of that I discover have a podcast, and then I give it a listen. If I enjoy their podcast persona, then I'll keep listening. Or people that have been mentioned or were guests on other podcasts that I enjoyed. So you'll sort of follow them from a guest on a podcast to their podcast, if and then good. check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you enjoyed them on the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's makes sense. Yeah. So what? Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out why. So if there's 40 of them, yeah, let's hear another one. What else? Let's see. We got um, American Arts and Culture, which is a new podcast from Whitmer Thomas and Clay Tatum of Power Violence, a long-running L.A. show. Um, and they... It's a new one? It's a new one. Um, what do they do? I mean, technically, it's a pop culture review show, but it really is its own unique brand of insanity that is just very engaging. Um, I would suggest listeners listen to the Sarah Sherman episode. Who's um, Sarah Sherman? Sarah Sherman is a comedian from... Um, and he was the guest? Chicago. She was the guest, yeah. It was a woman? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sarah Sherman is a uh, comic from Chicago, and so she came on, and they ostensibly talk about pop culture? Yes, ostensibly. Um, the, she talked specifically about The Sopranos. What is that? The Sopranos. The Sopranos? Yeah. Okay. And, um, okay. So <laughs> essentially it's and the whole episode, sort of like the dork forest where she just talked about how much she loved the Sopranos. Not really though. It's really hard to explain, um, the insanity that clay brings to the table. It's hard really... to explain any <laughs> podcast to anyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, what is, how does clay, does clay not want to talk about the thing that you brought up or does he want no, to somehow clay, clay just has a very, yeah, I just, uh, it's just a very insane, a very specific type of insanity. Um, like during the, the Sopranos talk, uh, this they basically start talking about the Gumars, which uh, is like the the girlfriends on the side that the mobsters have. And he starts talking about, you know, how do I become a Gumar? And okay, then, so it weeds off yeah. into just regular conversations. Into just about... regular comedy stuff. Okay. Yeah. And, um... Have you ever listened to Carmen Morales's? Uh, I don't know if you know her. She is a stand-up comic here in Los Angeles. I do know her, but and, I know she um, has a pod. Yeah, she has a podcast, and it's essentially the anti-dork forest. <laughs> and it is about things that you don't like. 
like. Ah. And uh, so it is um, she, her and Brian. I think it's Brian is her co-host. And uh, I've met Brian at least a half a dozen times. <laughs> You'd think I'd remember his last name. He is also a comic. <laughs> and I've done a show at The Lab. And uh, they're both very sweet, very entertaining people. <laughs> and they talk about uh, what they hate. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. So give me another one. What else you got? <laughs> I'll have to look at I'll have to look hers up. Yeah, you gotta look at hers. Oh yeah, um, you know, throwing shade. That's Aaron. Um, throwing oh shade. Throwing shade is Brian Safi and Aaron uh, Gibson. I don't know why I was blanking on that. Um, and that's a specific. That's a culture and news podcast that specifically focuses on uh, women and uh, LGBTQ stories in the news, and is my primary news source. Outside oh, of interesting. what comes up on Instagram. <laughs> well, what comes up on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. I'm, what that, does come up on Instagram? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't spend enough time scrolling Instagram. Again, another sign of my depression, but I, a lot of my knowledge to, uh, nowadays comes from Instagram. <laughs> who, who do you follow on Instagram? I just follow comics, but I really get lost in that search section. Have well, ever... there's a search section on Instagram? Yeah. I have not. Basically, if you ever have to like search for somebody's name or whatever, yeah. that, that section... There's a ton of like random Instagram stuff that'll pop up, sort of, but like maybe you'll like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. You can really get you can really get lost in the stream there. <laughs> Fair enough, um, but it is dangerous. There's like every every few minutes, there's one that pops up that's like either a horrible like acne video or some other like decapitated something. So just be careful. Oh my god! There. So yeah. the algorithm is not of... correct. Okay, and it was a little shock jockey, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, what is happening? Okay, so Aaron. Who I have met. Yes. And then who's the other comic on Throwing Shade? Brian Safi. Brian Safi, who yeah. I've met. Yes. And um, they talk about, and are they, do they consider themselves LBGTQ? Yeah, Brian Safi is a gay man mm -hmm. and Aaron Gibson is a woman. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Now we know. <laughs> and uh, so that is, that is, okay, what else? And that's, that's another, four. That's, that's another amazing. podcast that I worked on briefly uh, where, again, I could transform my fandom into work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a common thread for me. Okay, uh, fair next enough. Next up is the Jackie and Lori podcast, regular listener. Regular listener to yeah, the Jackie again, and Lori podcast? in the vein of research, it's one of the best research tools <laughs> for comedy for me. Again. Wow. <laughs> well, it, we do have a comic of the week every week that yes. you may or may not know. Oh, no. I mean more about the tea that you guys spill. All the <laughs> oh, oh, oh all, the, all the bitching and, yeah. and kvetching? Yes, yes. Sure. Sure, that is, uh, we are, <laughs> we are alive. Yeah. We are certainly very much, uh, last night's episode, and the, this won't air for a couple of, this will be a couple of weeks after the one that just aired today, because it's Monday. <laughs> um, I was talking about some, some show that I was doing, and um, I named a bunch of names, and Kyle and Lori were like, we're gonna, we should edit that. <laughs> And I was like, I suppose we should edit that. And then there was some discussion of how editing it. And then I was like, well, fuck it. Just play it. I don't know if you listened to that episode. I don't it, I don't think it... I usually listen to it after my show, The Business, where I feel the most um, exhausted it's, with comedy and in the best mood for it. Okay, what is The Business? Uh, the Business is my weekly show at Little Joy in Echo Park that you've done oh. a few times. Oh, the TV... I thought it was another podcast. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. so... Oh, you listen to it after, the, oh, after that show. Yeah, when I'm sick of comedy. Oh, when you're sick of comedy. <laughs> it is nice uh, to hear somebody else who's exhausted yes, by comedy. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, the Lori last night was actually uh, quite sweet because <laughs> she was, we hadn't talked in a month. Yeah. And so she was like, I haven't had anyone to talk. I was like, feel God, feel free to get other friends. <laughs> and she does have other friends, but, but it's. She's uh, got to save stuff for the pod. That's what she's doing. She's saving stuff for the pod. And um, you guys are both very methodical. So it makes sense that she would be stashing away anecdotes to only talk about on the pod. Only to talk about on the podcast. I sometimes call her and she's like, why are you, why are you telling me this? And I was like, well, why don't you practice your acting chops <laughs> and uh, act like you've never heard this. She's not an and actress. She's a stand-up comic. Except for the fact she wants to be an actress. Oh. She does some acting stuff. Oh, okay. and, uh, and it's always so weird to me whenever <laughs> she does acting stuff because we're all here in Los Angeles and we always want to do stand-up except for the people who don't. And um, There's a lot of pivoting in comedy. And so if you do stand-up and they ask you to do acting, you're like, well, I should want to do that. I live here. <laughs> And um, so it's 
Yeah. So it's all very, it's all very weird. So pick another one. Yeah. Let's see. Next one is actually the Long Shot Podcast, which is the shirt I'm wearing right now because I did work for them as well, mainly because their fans kept demanding t-shirts and they kept being like, we don't know how to make t-shirts. So I was like, let me come on and produce and make a t-shirt happen. <laughs> Sean Conroy. <laughs> yes. Sean Conroy used to be Eddie Pepitone. Yes. Now and Joe Wagner. Now Joe Wagner. Um, yeah. Every time I do it, I always think... Why have they had me as guests? There's a <laughs> five people here uh, with an Amber, Kenny, Kenny, and um, the Dynasty Man, and the, oh right, Jamie yeah. Flan. Yeah. So yeah, so these are all people individually. I would talk to for an hour. Yeah. Uh, as a group, I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting enough Sean Conroy. I'm not getting enough <laughs> Jamie Flan. I'm not getting See, enough I'm, Amber. I'm the opposite. I feel like as someone. I mean, I knew Sean and Eddie. And Amber and all them before I started listening to the podcast. But now the my favorite way of taking in their personalities is the podcast. Oh, it's 10 minutes at a crack? Because uh, <laughs> they, they do a round robin kind of well, situation. Yeah. And now they have given up on having guests on. So it is just more about their specific lives and stuff. Oh, good. Yeah. Because there's so <laughs> many of them. Yeah. No, they had one guest on in the last few months. And it was strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it that still, is weird. It was still good, but it was just strange for them to have a target. <laughs> weird fun fact about Sean Conroy. He went to grade school with one of my best friends <laughs> and uh, in New York City, who owns a woman who owns a toy store on the Upper West Side called mm -hmm. West Side Kids. Nice. And they went to grade school. And Jenny Bergman uh, told me probably 20 years ago, she said, how is Sean Conroy? I always had a crush <laughs> on him in grade school. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's adorable. <laughs> and uh, so... They're both in committed monogamous relationships, so I think I'm not breaking any rules by telling anyone. No, but also he could use this for research later if he's not in that monogamous relationship. Well, and she isn't either. Yeah. Right. Right. Because <laughs> she just got married. Yeah. <laughs> like two years ago. <laughs> Three years ago. And uh, so uh, what else? Let's hear another one. Let's see. Like, so this is literally, you're listening to just a bunch of comics talk about a variety of things yeah. while being stand-up comics. Yeah, and often people that I know personally in the real world, like, Who Charted is the next one. That's Howard Kramer. Um, who is a comic. Who is a comic, who I do uh, help. You Have you done his new his show, uh, Squat Melt? I stopped by uh, about a month or so ago yeah. after Brody yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. died. And, that was the um, one I had to miss, which was a bummer. Well, I, I just stopped them. by to give him a hug because I knew he was really good friends with Brody. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I knew Brody, obviously, but yeah. I did not. Uh, we were not good friends. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I knew that Howard, very seriously good friends. Yeah, but so. he's been doing a show since Meltdown closed every Wednesday at 8. Um, it started behind the alley of the Right, just meltdown. in the alley behind yeah, Meltdown. Just and in <laughs> honor of the Meltdown show. Then we got kicked out of there by the new um Or are you start. helping produce that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I booked some people on it, but okay. um, as somebody who needs I've a I've never chair, done it. Yeah, well, you need to get in the mix of it. But also, I feel... I. I ask very specific people to do it as it has, you know, it's basically, do you want to come to a dark alley and do stand up without a mic, without a light? Um, there is an audience Next to a of at least 30. Yeah. No more dumpster that we were last at the Steve Allen. So it was just in front of actual squatters. Yeah. But now we got kicked out of there because of Barry. So now the show is Barry. The TV What's show, Barry? HBO Barry. Oh. They shoot in there. It's their, like, acting studio. Oh, fair so enough. Us so and the actual squatters have been kicked out while they shoot it. Okay. We'll reclaim it when they're off When shooting. they're hiatus? Yeah, but so for now, it has become the squat crawl, which is now... The squad uh, crawl. Yeah, so now it's a it's a crawl of the neighborhood stopping at various stoops to do stand-up. So that if you're game for that... We'll, we'll schedule this after. <laughs> I once did stand-up comedy in an alley in Melbourne. Uh, after my set at a theater, there was like, hey, we're doing another set next to a dumpster in this alley behind this coffee shop if you want to pick up a set. And I did. I picked up a set, and it paid $50. Damn. They passed the hat, and people in Australia pay for theater. Oh, damn. And so uh, everyone, and there were six of us. Got fifty dollars. It was amazing. It's true. Um, yeah, I'm happy that LA has just started paying a little bit for comedy. <laughs> Do they pass the hat at the squat crawl? Uh, no, I think there's just there's free beer and there's t-shirts for sale. <laughs> oh, so he sells a squat melt a squat crawl t-shirt? Yeah, but he gives away stickers. Okay, <laughs> so it all balances out. Right. So who charted? What is that about? I've uh, never. That's uh, a show uh, with where, him. With him. Um, it used to be him and Kulop, and then it was him and Natasha. Now it's mainly him and his... Natasha Legero? Yeah. And, and Kulop, um, Scott Vel Ackerman? Yeah. Velisa. Um, Velisa? Is that how you pronounce it? Velisa. Velisa. I think that's it. Okay. Um, but that's a show where they 
uh, talk about like Billboard Top 100, and then they'll do another kind of music chart based on their choices. But they just talk about the Billboard. They talk about the movie, the top ten movies in the nation. They just they just basically talk about why are these things so popular? Oh, do I get it? Or you know what I mean? Okay, that kind of stuff. Wow, you are drawn to personalities because <laughs> these are all the same show, but just different people talking about. Them. Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, there's a whole world of podcasting, and I really do just stay in that comedy section of iTunes. Right, where they're talking, there, there's like there's two on this already that are literally <laughs> just talking about TV and movies and music yeah. and yeah. I mean, do you I, have other ones that are just TV music <laughs> but are also? I mean, yeah, mostly I have just the Bechdel cast, which is Jamie. Loftus and Caitlin Durante. Right. Where they Those, talk about... Do they both do stand-up? They do both do stand-up. Now, here's the weird thing about that, is I run into them sometimes doing stand-up. Say their names slowly. Jamie Loftus. Jamie Loftus, who I run into more often yes. than... Then Caitlin Durante. Then Caitlin Durante. Yes. And I believe both of them have been Comics of the Week. Yes. Um, but I, they are... And I remember them being very funny. And I've been on the Bechtel cast. Yes. And that one is... The, the the you pick a movie, and then you have to feel if it you have to discover whether it passes the Bechtel test. Yeah, you basically talk about the movies from a feminist perspective, and um, I'm in the wait list to do um, a Walk to Remember, the Mandy Moore joint, um, because <laughs> it was a very important tool for my ex manipulative boyfriend, and I'm very excited to <laughs> dive into. I have never seen that movie. <laughs> I I think my movie was. Um, and it didn't. It didn't back the Bechdel t- test. It was. I just listened to it in oh, the did last you? month or so. I can't remember. Could be anything. Could it's. Be. Uh, it was uh, Ferris Bueller. I don't know. It's. I hope it wasn't Ferris Bueller. A movie I've never enjoyed. <laughs> uh, so you're not a Hughes fan. Well, I I like John Hughes. I or I did at the time, but Ferris Bueller. I literally. I am a judgmental. I all I could think was, just go to school. <laughs> that car isn't yours. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah. And literally, it was that sort of attitude. I do and, think that uh, as, as a nerd identifier, mm-hmm. um, it's, hard to, it's hard to identify with the, the rebel. You know what I mean? It's like, what, what are you doing? The cool like, rebel kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you? I mean, I've been told that I have to, you know, follow all the rules and then things will go good. But here you are just making your own rules and it's also going well and it's really blowing my mind. It does feel, it does feel different. Uh, what, what do you got? I'm actually, I was just looking for your episode on here to try to do it, but it was too long ago. It was um, too hard. So these these next podcasts I've are been actually, on a lot of podcasts. I wonder have. how many podcasts I've been on that you listen to. You can what, go, well, you can Google your name in the iTunes now, and it'll pop up all the right at least or in the Laughable app. I think the Laughable app is the one that does that. Oh yeah, I can, think I have the Laughable app. Is it still around? I haven't heard. Um, yeah, it was it. it was very popular for about three or four months. It yeah. was great. Yeah, and, and then um, Stitcher came in. Right. Well, I think it was pre. It was after Stitcher. <laughs> but yeah, but now I feel like Stitcher is kind of li- it's a new level. Like it didn't. Stitcher and it I didn't take. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So pick one. So the next two last culture uses and seek treatment are both on the Forever Dog Network, where now I am the talent booker. So another example of me getting my hooks into a show that I really like. Okay, um, that you listened to before you worked for the yes. Forever Dog Network. Network, A newer network, but they have a lot of really great talent. Um, most of it out of New York, but they also have Alice Wetterland has her Trek podcast. The Star Trek thing that I yeah. did. Dave, uh, What's What are the two that you just say them slowly? So Los Culturistas and... C- Los Culturistas? Yes. Who's on that? That's Bo and Yang, who's a writer on SNL, and Matt Rogers, who's a writer on the other two on Comedy Central. Um, but they're both, uh, again, UCB performers, uh, mm-hmm. mu- like musical, theater, comedy, comedians. Okay. Um, but they also... And what do they talk about on Los uh, Culturistas? They, <laughs> that one's basically like an interview show, like a WTF, but a lot uh, gayer and musical theater-y. And oh, okay, so more musical theater actors and stuff that they have? Yeah, and just more, you know, more LGBT, more um, culturally. Inclusive and yeah, try to, try, yeah. Just trying to be that, culturally but also. Conscious, but not like. But PC. they're not interviewing. Uh, they're, 
Oh, and they're kind of shock jockey? No, no, no. I'm just saying that, like, I feel like sometimes when you say, like, LGBT and inclusive and stuff like that, people are like, oh, uh, like a snowflake or whatever. And or it's like, like it's no. boring somehow? Yeah, or, or some sort of Fuck negative connotation. Yeah, uh, yeah, Let yeah. me tell you something. <laughs> it doesn't, it's all, it's all who's, but those those two are, they're UCB uh, they actors. Were, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they... now they're writers and uh, and actors or yes. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and they mostly interview, not stand-ups, but uh, actors and writers. They do interview stand-ups and stuff, but it's just more in the LGBTQ world of stand-up. So you know how New York is basically like the cellar and the clubs and then like the artsy alt scene. Yep. And it's a lot more, it's a lot more split than here in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, So they really are like, I feel like I I lived in New York for one year in 2015 and it was the year that everybody I knew had moved to LA and nobody in New York had really like popped up yet. Mm -hmm. So this podcast really kind of introduced me to like actually who I should be friends with and like who in the scene I should like meet. Like, oh, which shows should I spend my valuable time and bodily energy going to right right so, physically going to yes. and watching stand-up yes. comics the only reason i only lasted a year there <laughs> right and um, so what did they suggest did they the, i mean they have a ton of comics on that are really great you know joel kim booster cole escola patty harrison all these people that are now like selling out shows everywhere like they're big comics i've not now. heard of any any of them truly what uh patty who <laughs> patty harrison harrison yeah she was in hulu shrill She's also a writer on Big Mouth and um, just a hot up and coming comedian. Okay, so she probably doesn't need to be comic of the week, uh, but she could probably. I mean, we could all use it. Oh yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, but it's a who, crossover. If, you know, you haven't heard of her. It's like a whole new audience, right? Because a lot of New York comics I haven't heard of, and um, that's the thing. Is but that by the way, they, a lot of LA comics I haven't heard of. Yes. So, <laughs> but there's a lot you have heard of. Yes. So uh, wait. So who are the two dudes that you mentioned? Uh, Cole Escola. Cole he, Escola. Yeah, he's a comedian cabaret performer um he's on amy sedaris's show at home with amy sedaris okay um and he also tours the country selling out shows okay and who's uh, who else joel kim booster joel kim booster who i've heard of yes he's a great stand-up comedian um i think he was just in moon tower he um has been on comedy central digital at least um he did a and he's he's selling out Oh yes, stadiums yes. as well. Again, yes. Why? They're, Why are they doing it? How does it? How does it work? I think because like the same because the podcast is really big. Or? The podcast is really big. Um, Wait, but they were just guests on that podcast. They were just guests on it, but they were dynamic and engaging. And I do feel like, um, like I said, I came at a weird time in the New York scene, but I did get to meet all these people that then became the next generation of. New York comedy. So that's also maybe why you don't know them because they really have only popped off in the last like two or three years. Okay. Yeah. 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 And they're all, you know, relatively babies Mm -hmm. um, as far as like they're not road dogs or whatever. Right. They're Um, like, and and, because they're alty. Yes. They're alty and they're LGBTQ y. And they're, and they're in their what, late 20s? Yeah, thir- yeah, early 30s, oh, okay. late 20s, yeah. All right. Yeah, little adults. Well, good for them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, well, everyone's going to live to be 100 now, yeah. so 30 is very young. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and plus, I'm 100, so uh, everyone's very young. <laughs> Your question so, mark, as yeah, you exa- Well, it's, uh, I was born 107, <laughs> but I'm also pushing 100, so it's weird that those two things are coming together. It's real nice for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, give me another one. Uh, so the other one that's on that network is Seek Treatment. Seek um, Treatment. S E I. Yeah. Uh, uh, or seek, like like to search to search oh, for S-E-E-K. treatment. Oh, S E E K. Yeah. Not seek treatment. as in the uh, the religion. No. Okay. No. 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 That'd be. Gr- I want there to be a Seek Treatment because I uh, mean there is ethnically ambiguous, which is a podcast about you know religion and and culture primarily. Who's I mean, on that? That podcast is that. That's Anna Hosnia and um, Shireen. I forget her last name. Um, but yeah, Anna's a great friend of mine. She used to kind of be an assistant helper with my shows and stuff. And then she fully uh, leaped over me and is now a very powerful producer at the How Stuff Works Network. But also How a Stuff very Works. engaging host and persona. And has her own pod. Yes. Yeah. And then what's the name of that one again? A- Ethnically Ambiguous. Okay. Yeah. Have you done that one? I don't think so. We should. I'll get you in touch. All It'll right. Be a good. It's uh, you're ethnically be... ambiguous. Uh, as yeah. am I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all. <laughs> it's all. I'm just passing for white over here, so oh, yeah, uh, no. it's all working out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what's the seek one? Who's in that? Who's is that? Uh, seek treatment is Cat Catherine Cohen and Pat Regan. Um, also, people that New are York selling comics. out New York comics, selling out shows. Catherine. Cohen. She's a lot more like a Bridget Everett mu- a musical comedy type, but okay. um, but very refreshing, not in the hacky way that it's been. 
Um, like I said, it's a little more cabaret, more like Joe's Pub style. Okay. Um, and it's also, it's basically a spinoff from the Los Culturistas world. Okay. It's a similar, their focus is on boys, sex, fucking, dating, and love, mm -hmm. whereas Los Culturistas is a sensibly pop culture. Okay. Um, but it's just, an, again, two big personalities, a really deep friendship. Um, and both shows are, that's kind of one of the things as a podcast fan, I feel like you probably do not identify with. What? <laughs> it's, it's very uh, engaged. You basically, these are podcasts that make you feel like you're friends with them. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people, I mean, the thing about The Dork Forest is that it, it, I'm not particularly good socially, so meeting people uh, one at a time to talk about what they really like and just to be supportive of that and to try to figure out what I might like about that dorkdom yeah. is interesting for me. And then uh, Laurie and Kilmartin and I are uh, starting a friendship. Yes. So we're two years in. Yes. And, uh, and we're all on that journey with you, and it's the, exciting to It's see an evolve. exciting journey to see it evolve. It's yeah. very nice. I like and that we're in the phase where you guys are actively stopping your friendship to keep it professional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all on her. And because uh, I'm like, you don't want to hang out? And she's like, mm, I can't nope. wait for the crossover discussion of this episode on your other podcast. <laughs> Again, me just trying to infiltrate all of the world's right, love. All the infiltrate <laughs> away. It's uh, right. Because uh, the. Um, so do you have any on Max Fun or All Things Comedy? Um, Those I, are the two networks that I'm a member of. <laughs> just to, I do. I listen to Pop Rocket, Guy Branham's podcast that's, on uh, the Max I, Fun Network. I could listen to uh, Guy Branham talk about anything. Oh, yes. Is it just him? No, it's But him. I've never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. It's uh, it's a writer, Winter Mitchell. Okay. Um, it's I, I, Margaret. Somebody? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, so three people. Three people, two women, one gay man. Um, talking about talking pop. Talking about co uh, pop culture again. I, d I just like to hear, I like to hear comedians talk about a prompt, but not do their stand-up in a podcast. Okay. That's my ideal. And I think it comes from growing up with those VH1 talking head shows. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pop-up. Pop-up. Uh, uh, that I love the 80s, 90s. I love, exactly. Yeah, that's and how tomorrow. I learned about The Cure. My One one of my two bands that I listen to. Oh, there you go. It's, uh, <laughs> again, the, the Cure is not going to, the Cure is not going to help you get over your depression. That's no. what we do know. Oh, but yeah, it may yeah, yeah. help you wallow and know, well, I'm not as depressed as they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, uh, I used to listen to Harry Chapin like that. <laughs> anyway. So I do not advise seeing them live. I didn't, I haven't seen them live, but I did watch the live stream of their show at the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. And, um, Robert Smith makes me sad to look at. So okay. I will only listen to him now. <laughs> okay. I've never, uh, I don't know who he is. So uh, <laughs> it's all, it's all good. So, okay. So uh, yeah, go for another one. Oh, oh, anything on all things or uh, another one uh, on Max Fun? Well, I, I also briefly used to, to work for all things comedy and uh, long shot is technically on, long, on the oh, there all you things go. comedy network. Um, I used to <laughs> a lot of things are technically, <laughs> technically. on all things comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet the only people they tend to care about are Bill Burr and Bill Burr yeah. Kreischer. I mean, that's how all the networks work. It's, it's, you know, it's there's a, two or three that they really love. Yeah. There's two that they really love and the rest they hope to love one day. Okay. Cause yeah. they're not bringing in the numbers. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Cause it's, um, all things comedy tends to just have more and more podcasts every time I open up that app. Yeah. And you're like, what's happening? Well, and I think it's also because that's becoming, it seems like that's becoming the new kind of model for networks is like, you do want to create your own content, but you also want to just acquiesce content because that's already, you know, has an audience and stuff like that. Like, iHeartRadio just got into the podcasting game, so they're just left and right podcasters Acquiring. starting to get yeah the little yeah. iHeartRadio badge on there. So mm -hmm. this is the I think this is the newest evolution of the podcast biz as the um, you know startup company people that are funding podcasting oh, keep trying the, to figure the, out how to make it work. Right, I think um, may, and maybe advertisers are more excited about advertising on something that it has a network because it the, it gives them more it sense of stability or more sense of something. Well, networks have their own ad companies that like are connected with advertisers. Basically, the networks that are making money now have like a dedicated line to an existing like advertising agency mm -hmm. where the agency doesn't have to like, you basically don't have to defend podcasting anymore. You just say like, Hey, we got another uh, entity that has this many listeners like okay. radio or whatever. Um, so yeah, the ad company that approached me, approached me separate of all things comedy. Yeah. And um, they, 
I mean, I, I got a people. whole year of New Yorker yeah. and a whole year of Robin Hood yeah. and a half a year of HelloFresh and all these things that are, I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> and uh, and they're very nice. They're actually really good. All Things Comedy just contacted me about a couple of uh, pod, They And they had this whole thing where, uh, All Things Comedy, where I had to do a shout out in the beginning of the show and then a mid-roll. And Pre-roll, was, mid-roll, post-roll. Yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, you get one mid roll for this a uh, hundred bucks or yeah. whatever it is, right? Yeah, I'm, you're not going to get two ads for a hundred bucks because the other th- people just want a mid roll, and they're and it's fiddly anyway because you have to uh, cut out like um, that's why the thirty pre- seconds on either either side. Yeah, that's why the pre roll is more the pre roll is more valuable because you are taken aback by it in the beginning, but also the pre roll and post roll are easier to like zoom by. Yeah, as Right now, we're in the stage where, like I said, the networks have the connection to the ad agencies. They, I don't think anybody's really questioning whether people are listening to the ads. They're just seeing if people like use the codes or whatever. Right. Um, that, that's how they're sort of counting if the ads yeah. work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can obviously still skip through everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. It, it it is continues to be audio. Yes. <laughs> so, what do you do about the ads? Do you uh, do you tend to skip? Do you listen to it? At, I had a podcast dork on it was probably five years ago. Brandy Brown, comic from Minneapolis, very funny. Uh, she uh, listens to again probably forty podcasts, yeah. and she tends to listen to them at one and a half. Mm. Do you do that? No, I definitely I listen to podcasts real time. I listen to real time, but I mainly listen to them to get me to do computer work because it's something that I can like, you know, it's not, oh, it's on the background. You're... Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It, I'm one of those people that kind of needs like constant noise or something. And so podcasting just kind of keeps me focused in a work mode. But so basically every day I'll like pick a podcast to listen to for like four or five hours and then that'll be the day. Oh, that you catch up essentially. Yeah. So you listen to like two or three weeks. Yeah. It kind of, it can, they can stack. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Of course. So that makes, I think, I think now you're realizing when I said I listened to podcasts to prepare for this episode, I listened to you for about four hours before coming here. (laughs) Holy shit. I that, was doing other stuff too. But, yes, it's but. Uh, <laughs> that is a lot of podcasts. Well, it's only four, right? But it's four podcasts. So you listen to you said you listen to the Winter Spears bathroom podcast. Yes, you listen to Hemda and um, Keith, Keith, and Caitlin's um, episode of Doll, Ronald Doll. Uh, oh, the Roland Doll, the r- whatever. Yeah, that that one that was oh that was Caitlin. Dur- 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 Gil. Gil. That was oh, Caitlin, Caitlin Gil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. About okay. Ronald yeah, that- Dahl and his chopped off nose or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Alice in Wonderland? Is that uh, who wrote that? Is Was no. it the Alice in Wonderland one or was it no, the... Uh, that's he, Lewis Carroll. No, Ronald um, Dahl was the one that had like a crazy childhood and he wrote like Holes and, and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the stuff. Chocolate Factory. There we go. And uh, I was like, there's so many episodes. I can only <laughs> remember six. Yes. And uh, But some of them were great. So what else? Uh, yeah. What else we got on here? Is, are there ones that you listen to uh, right away and then you kind of... Like with comic books, I'll pick up 40 comic books. I'll pick... The five I, I want to read right away, right away. So it's like that. You- yeah, I definitely, ha- they're definitely in order of most likely to listen to. And they're definitely, um, they're definitely, are, I feel like there's different moods for the different podcasts. Um, sure. There's definitely some that I'm like more engaged in and, you know, will only listen to if I'm doing like graphic design work, like where I don't have to use my brain. Or there's some that I, I mean, one that I just got back into, Britney's Graham. Do you, have you heard of that? Um, it's Brandy Posey, or no, it's, sorry, it's Barbara Gray and Tess Barbara. Oh, wait, I just heard about this. Yeah, and the whole Britney's Britney Graham, thing. Britney's Instagram, and they, they revealed broke, it. Yeah, they, like, have a Britney deep throat situation going on. Yeah. And, like, yeah, so I got back into it for that. <laughs> That's insane. Again. Wait, it's and, Babs and Tess, right? It's Babs and Tess, yeah. Okay. Brandy is the host with them on Lady Lady. Right. This is separate. This is a podcast that was about Entirely about Britney Spears' Instagram. Yeah, which uh, has now become an investigative journalist uh, <laughs> podcast about the imprisonment of Britney Spears in an illegal conservatorship. Right. <laughs> it's really fascinating, especially as somebody who's also like a comedy industry dork. Like I mm-hmm. really love about, like I said, Jackie Lurie, I love the tea. Um, but 
it's just very interesting to like have a really clear example of some of the f- hard extremes that this industry can create can with just intimidation you. and money. Right, right. I feel like I definitely feel like we're like basically watching our own like Judy Garland episode unfold in yeah. front of us because she's like thirty seven now. Right? Yeah, yeah. She's been in a conservatorship for eleven years. Uh, those are mainly for people in comas or who are te- so technically mentally retarded that they cannot operate on their right, own. Right, right. Um, and yeah, it's her dad, her lawyer that was part of it just quit because he was afraid that he would be disbarred if he continued on. Oh my God. Like it is getting big. And they right. just put a new... And um, how, how long has this been going on? This specifically has been going on for like two weeks. Okay. But, so it is early days. Oh, when yeah, this no. comes out in about three weeks. It was really like a putting the pieces together from her lack of Instagram posts. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the bomb dropped and it's been on like Entertainment Tonight and like the talk and like <laughs> all Free Britney is the hashtag. Good for you, Barbara Gray yeah. and Tess Berger. Well, and, and they have, since this started, they... There is a new court date on the books for one of the like conservator check ins, like basically right. to see if she still needs it. So they're like actually making They've affected some in the change yes. at a grassroots level. Yes. <laughs> As I so, always say. Again, podcasting also, I feel like I listen to, again, in the like research learning idea, it just stuff will break on podcasts that no one will pay attention to because it's a podcast that you had to listen to like an hour and 20 minutes in or something. But um, I feel like there's always some sort of breaking news that I get like, oh, these people are together. Oh, these people broke up. Oh, this guy that I'm dating has a wife. Different, right? <laughs> different discoveries. Yeah, those are. Uh, <laughs> and the, the weird thing is, is it does. It is a learning experience. Mm-hmm. Every time I've ever talked to somebody at any length, I have learned something. Yeah. And Podcasts are just that. They're conversations that we're all just sort of sitting in on. Yeah. And um and there's like there's ones like my sister listens to all of the news ones. Yeah. And she went to a convention, like a con. Like they a comic con. Po- there's a politicon, which is specifically po- like political it was comedy. Journalist <laughs> convention of podcasts and she w- and Avenetti was there that? and it was in San Antonio it was the weekend of her birthday she gave it to herself as a present <laughs> she literally left her kids with her wife and she's like I'm gonna take myself for this weekend to Texas yeah and, uh, and the then- best thing about going to like a live podcast convention like that is that when you actually get to the live podcast itself a lot of it is just people on their phones because that's how you listen to podcasts. <laughs> so it's just you get to be your most real self, which is like slightly checking out while people well, are listening on stage. to people on stage. Yeah, this is. Um, have you heard of? I just did a podcast uh, with Idoye Travis. Yeah, the Dark Tank. The Dark also Tank. on Forever. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Is that one's on Forever? Yeah. Okay, so uh, he was a. I never met him before. We mm-hmm. met at the Emma Arnold uh, Comedy Festival in Boise, yeah. and he he was the other headliner. And he did the Dork Forest on a panel, and he was uh, fascinating. His mm-hmm. anime is his dorkdom. And, uh, but panel, live Dork Forests where it's a panel, but nobody gets to really do a deep dive. Yeah. And, um, but then I was on Dark Tank, and that was Banana Land, <laughs> because <laughs> it's entirely about four, usually comics, in this case, three comics and one musician mm-hmm. that was also at this festival. Yes. Um, who are people of color mm-hmm. uh, judging Whitey Magoo's going up with an answer for racism? Yes, and um, some of it's tongue in cheek, and some of it <laughs> and is intense. Yeah, and there, and then uh, what's his name? Who the M? Um, uh, I'm spacing. He was also he was on the panel, oh. and he was great. He's a comic, and um, he was really great. And his dorkdom was Magic the Gathering <laughs> cards, and. Um, in in that do- in in that live dork forest, we learn that that man uh, does not tell his wife that he collects ten thousand dollars worth of <laughs> Magic the Gathering cards. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and he has a very very extensive collection of very rare, very beautiful Magic the Gathering cards that she's like, yeah, oh, they're Pokemon cards, whatever. Uh, oh, I miss hmm. my Pokemon cards. Aw. So what else? Uh, you got another one? Let's yeah. do it. We're, we're, we are clipping along here. We're almost at an hour. It's know, kind of exciting. We've barely gotten through half my list. Right. Um, I also listened to this podcast, High and Mighty, which is on the 
um, HeadGum Network. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I feel like mentioning all the networks, but, you know, just yeah. in case people don't know. Right. Um, that one's, High and Mighty. Who's yes. that? That one is John Gabris. He's also a UCB comedian actor type. Um, he once hosted a show on True TV uh, called Santa's in the Barn, which was a competition reality show for who would be America's best Santa. Wow. <laughs> This is where you find out things about Los Angeles where you're like, I just need $450. Does yeah. anyone have $450? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. So what's High it. and Mighty? High and Mighty is, as you would probably guess, a podcast where the host just gets high and talks to somebody about whatever they nope. want. It's actually that similar. That was not something I would have guessed. It's a little bit similar to this, but with a much more stonery vibe. Because right. every episode is a different topic based on whatever the guest wants to talk Joseph about. Joseph Scrimshaw has a show that's almost exactly like this called Obsessed. <laughs> and it's a beautiful show. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but I are there a lot of... Uh, I would imagine that there would be a lot of podcasts where people are stoned yeah. and record. Uh, yeah, I do feel like that now that, you know, 420 is legal in most places. Well, not really most places, but it's becoming more legal and more accepted. Well, it's legal here. It's legal here. And so stoner magoos are uh, are smoking weed and talking into microphones. True, but I, I just think that now that it's become basically the same as podcasting, now that it's become a little more known, there's more podcasts that actually like point out the weed part of it as part of a branding effort. Oh, interesting. I mean, this guy is a tried and true stoner and would have done it uh, whether or not 420 was popular. <laughs> um, uh, is it not called marijuana anymore? Is it just called 420? No, it's called marijuana. I just decided that I wanted to refer to it as 420. We just we just passed the holiday, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, um, do you a big pot smoker? Is I that am. one of your dorkdoms? It is one of my dorkdoms. As somebody with chronic pain and, uh, as I've mentioned many times, depression, anxiety. <laughs> I think it's a depressive. It's, so well, it's technically uh, it technically works on the same receptors that antidepressants work on. So it is maybe it works. literally part of my <laughs> medical regime. It's the reason that I don't stop it because it is part of my. So the, you, you've been, yeah, you've been, you've been prescribed a cocktail of various <laughs> different drugs, including pot. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what else? Let's see. Um, I mean, there's Best Show. I feel like it would be a disservice to not mention Best Show with Tom Sharpling. Oh, I don't know that one. That is, uh, that's one of the, lo- that's like the longest. It started out also at a community radio station in New Jersey um, that, you know, mainly got its fandom in, well, it's a three hour radio show that started in New Jersey um, and hosted by Tom Sharpling. And that's a call in show. And that has been going, it's as, it's as old as like WTF and, and never not funny. It was mm-hmm. like the East coast only um, comedy podcast, comedy podcast. Yeah. Cause it is a radio show, but it also was like podcasted. So, you know, and they had all the big Pat Oswalt's and David crosses and all the good, all the good big names. Um, but yeah, they, early on, early on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, now he does it totally independently. Um, just via like Patreon and donations and stuff like that. Um, but my favorite, uh, I guess the, f- there's like, it's basically a, to- a call show with a different topic every time. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some Gary the Squirrel is a recurring character. Okay. Um, that gets in a lot of fights with Andy Kindler. <laughs> okay. Oh, because Andy Kindler's on it? Andy Kindler is a friend of the show. He's on Okay. It. Though, I haven't, just side note, I haven't seen Kindler in forever and I really miss him and I want to see Well, him he's got a podcast out that's new. He does with J. Jo- Elvis Josh, Weinstein. Yeah, it was Josh Weinstein. Yes. And, um, from Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah. And um, have you tried that one? I have listened to that one. I need to get back into it um, to find out where he's at. I think he's, is he just doing a Nickelodeon show now? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Again, I don't I'll even, have to research I, and see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At. I don't even. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So there's. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, that's a lot of podcasts. Yeah, as I said, still barely halfway through. <laughs> right. Is there any you would like to mention before we are at an hour? <laughs> uh, I guess the there's one misandry with Marsha and, and Ray, which is a really good one. Um, I said ethnically ambiguous already there's uh yeah i feel like the rest of these are i listen to some i re-listen to some old podcasts sometimes if they're like bottle episodes or or what's a bottle episode or like like that rob hubel podcast that i mentioned once before it was like a 50 a 50 episode and it each episode's like eight minutes so sometimes i'll re-listen to that series okay what do you think about a podcast that's three hours long 
I like mean, I listen Holmes to them or Todd Glass and I Todd to Glass. Them. You listen to those? Yeah, those ones. You know, again, I'm listening to podcasts of four or five hours a day, so that's like an episode one podcast. Or two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and you don't get it. Doesn't get tiring. No, I mean, I'll skip an episode if I'm not into it, or I'll skip around, but generally, just let it go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it. I think it's fair to cherry pick, you know, yeah. with, with different um, topics and guests and and uh, and the different situations you're in. Like the last, I was just getting a tattoo recently, and we put on the All Fantasy Everything podcast, and I was listening, and I was like, I have to listen to this another time when I'm not like in searing pain because it just isn't. It's not connecting the same way. Right. Right. Yeah. You, <laughs> I, I suppose different different mo- moods would uh, lend itself to different music, and thus different podcasts. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, Sam Varela, 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 Varela. <laughs> I can do this, Varela. Yeah, yeah. There it is. I made an accent of you in an effort, <laughs> uh, Varela. <laughs> uh, Sam, this is uh, this has been great. I mean, I needed uh, to hear about at least thirty podcasts that I am not <laughs> listening to. But the thing is, is you are down a rabbit hole of some serious uh, podcasts, and everyone who listens to the Dork Forest, I know they listen to a lot of other po- podcasts. So, um, but I, I hope it at least. I hope this is proof that like, no matter how many podcasts you listen to, you still become dedicated fans of the podcasty and I hope that it has been translating for you in like more stand up attendance more and we gotta get you we gotta get your podcast live shows. We gotta get them popped. Is the like. numbers up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I it's think a- I think it's I think there's like a easy there's an easy yeah. marketing fix for that. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, is, is what I, what the, what people tell me about the Dork Forest, and I genuinely appreciate it, is that it's relatively, it's just, it's nice to listen to. <laughs> Somebody told me that they were going through a really hard time, that they were very, very depressed. We came up to a show, and I think it was in, it was in Seattle or or, or Michigan or something, and she said, you know, I've just, I've been really really depressed and scared and unhappy in my life. And she said, so I started listening to the dork forest and it puts me to sleep. (laughs) And I was like that, I don't mind that. And she's like, it's just, it's never, it's not going to be mean. It's just going to be informative and sometimes funny and sometimes always interesting. And, uh, and sometimes that, that itself is not enough to make it into uh, like a Burt Kreischer thing. I'm never going to take my shirt off. Yeah. It's not happening. <laughs> but I, I think that, I, yeah, I we can talk later because I feel like <laughs> there's nothing about this we podcast. We can do this. Yeah. That should not be hugely popular. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and I love doing it. So it, it, it genuinely, um, I'm sure I enjoy money as well. So yes. whatever can be done is fine. <laughs> but just think, all the rangers of the dork force that are listening now, I'm like the ground floor of REM. <laughs> They've gotten in on the ground floor yeah uh, <laughs> thank you so much for doing the show yeah, uh sam varela you guys it is at naked comedy at naked underscore comedy on twitter and the other one on instagram and check naked. out all of the different shows in new york and la that are uh produced by sam and thank you so much for doing the show thank you and rangers you know the rules out there take care of each other my hat my hat my hat they're dancing around my hat <laughs> My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?